Welcome everybody, this is Two Facet Podcast, a podcast where we talk about building digital products from two perspectives, yeah. design and product. I am Juncal González, I am a product designer and I'm here with Matt Mikulski, the product manager here. So yeah, so welcome everybody. Um, today we met for a topic as every time. Um, this time we wanted to talk a bit about what do we understand as a product team. Exactly. In terms of like what roles and like what responsibilities should be mapped there and how you can think about it. We are also going to try to talk a bit about like how you can apply uh, our thinking into like a smaller project. Like if you're starting a startup or your own project or you're working in a smaller company and where you cannot have all of those roles, we want to also show you how you can translate this thinking into like a smaller opportunity, some smaller tri teams, sorry very much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. super good introduction, yes, yeah. yes. So yeah, that's what we're going to talk about and maybe to start with, um, we can say that maybe in some companies or in some areas of the business, we have the teams based on the role, right? So yeah. you can have like the marketing team or the design team and that works sometimes in those yeah. situations because, well... Yeah, yeah you, you, you will have some specialities and you're going to have either teams or departments or like people focus on some skill. Uh, but what make those department teams is the collaboration between them, no? Exactly, uh, I believe exactly. So. So, so, so the difference that we would propose about thinking about the product team is okay, you may have a team of designers, right? And team of engineers yes. or yes. multiple teams of engineers. and. A lot of time you're gonna have a setup in the company where it's gonna be kind of working like those are separate teams. So design team may be treated as a resource to whatever teams that yes. are in the team. So when I need the some company. design services, I go to the team to request the service. Exactly. There are some like you know more um, project-based companies when IT and engineering is a service part more. No. Mm -hmm. So in this kinds of a scenario, um, it it is actually, I would say, hard to build products. Yes. Because this collaboration is more based on the handoff and the service work, right? So, and this has its own minuses, let's say. No? So there are yes. some downplays to this. People work a bit more in, in silos, let's say. Exactly. Yes. And for most technological companies, <coughs> uh, you really need this kind of cross-functional teams. Yeah. So you can have all the different skills and all the different roles that are required for all the stages of developing the product. Exactly, right? yeah. So, you know, the so we will move to the team, right? So what we believe is a team or a product team would be this multidisciplinary cross-functional group of people. Um, in terms of why philosophically, it's, you know, if you will only bit, build a feature, nobody will care, no? <laughs> um, if you build a pretty feature, maybe some people organically somehow magically will care about it. But if you have a clue about how to go to the market with that product or a feature, um, how to market it, how to sell it, how to support it and like onboard customers and people to it, then your chances are much better, right? So if we think that we have some people like design and engineering only thinking about solutions and value propositions and things like this, the chain is broken, no? So you, you don't have this connection and you will be lacking research. And if you treat them as a service, again, you're not going to have enough contacts. So the proposition here is to try to cover as many roles as possible vertically uh horizontally sorry for a team to like be able to um you know be self-managed and actually build no it's like yeah. uh, this old idea of startup within startup right so the startup should be able to operate on themselves without like other stakeholders etc so yeah so you will be able to have all the necessary parts connected together in the same in the same exactly. team and this is why we call it like multidisciplinary right and cross-functional yeah. yeah there's gonna be the visual here uh, with the idea about the tribes and and stuff like this but you can think about it so here on the visual you're gonna have horizontal like vertically you can imagine the specializations of people so you have designers product managers engineers um, researchers any role you can imagine and then how you build a team is it can be actually fluent. So you may need like two designer, one product manager and 
maybe in the case you're working, you will need people from marketing customer success. So then you can build this team like horizontal, horizontally through the structure of the company. So we're going to visualize that for you in the video. Um, for everybody listening, we'll attach a link to the image so you can you can visualize it exactly. also. And you actually need both, right? Because so this product team we're talking about normally will have an outcome yeah. um, assigned, kind of. They have a goal. Yeah. Um, but then at the same time, each of the of the roles they need to be together as well with their guild, right? With yeah. other people who are like them to keep in sync on ways of working and methodologies and yeah, how to, do we to, approach To build the craft, right? Exactly, so, yes. So then being in the product team, you're always in two teams at least, right? So in, you're in your tribe or, or, or speciality or however you're going to call it. And then you're going to have people inside the teams that are working then today. But yeah, in order to be better designer, it's probably better to talk to other designers <laughs> too from time to time, right? For feedback, yeah, for yeah, relationship. But, yeah. but what's also important in this strategy and, and the structure is the specialities themselves does not have like unique goals in majority of the cases. Of course, technological may have some tech depth to, to fix and, and, and stuff like this, but you should try always to, you know, take whatever needed and try to horizontally map it through the value for the company, right? So then you create teams for the outcome and not for projects, which is the other way to uh, like, you know, approach this. But well, um, we are here to more product driven development. So <laughs> that's what, what we're going to propose you. Exactly. So since the team, they have an outcome, they may come up with projects to do and everything. Yep. They need to be autonomous, as you say. Exactly. So they are able to say, oh, OK, we have this outcome as a team. We have this goal we need to reach and we should be able to do it just by ourselves. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, it's not going to be lean. We will need to ask for something outside yeah, and wait somewhere well. and then whatever like velocity or creativity you build on can be lost basically waiting on oh but now we need to find way to sell it no, or, or whatever like exactly. of course it depends heavily on like the product or the project you're doing so sometimes maybe not like required to have a marketing people inside the True. team it's it's not that any of the configuration we are mentioning today are not obligatory or required we're gonna say a bit about like a minimal set of skills that's needed to like you know um make your chances bigger <laughs> But yeah, 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 let's go further through it. So yes. the team should be cross disciplinary, autonomous. How about the size? So how big can it be now? Yeah. <laughs> um, so what's your thinking here? In my experience, yeah. without theory, without everything just working, three people, for instance, you can work super fast. It's super easy to work. Three, four people is super good. Then five, six, it's still okay -ish, but then when you start being like seven or eight people, it starts becoming very hard. So you start realizing that people start to have conversations in couples or in trios, and then the information starts, you know, like spreading. Yeah. So you start having like gap of knowledge as well. And also the workflow starts to be more complex because there's more people. So you need to start to create kind of framework for working yeah. together. So everything becomes a bit more, more complex. Yeah, I, I would agree to it. It's like uh, we prefer rather smaller teams over big ones, even though we understand that sometimes you need a bigger team, right? So sometimes you need more dis more developers for a problem. Uh, but what's important there is, again, to look at it per problem or per outcome you want to achieve, right? So it should not be a rule of we will have only two backends, two frontends and something uh, because this is the golden rule about we m want to have maximum five people because this is the perfect communication flow. Sometimes you're going to need more. Um, so I would agree heavily on small. You know, there is this saying from Jeff Bezos about like pizza size team. So teams in maximum should be fed by two pizzas. So if <laughs> you cannot feed the team with two pizzas, you have too, too big of a team. I don't like this the, the best measurement, but it's it's good enough, I would say. No, so actually, if it's smaller team, you can still agile, still keep being agile, right? Yeah. And you don't lose this 
speed as you said and communication exactly. is smoother. And still it can be bigger as you say but the good thing is to understand the things that come with be being it bigger so you are aware and you can you know wor work on them. Maybe yeah. you need some project management if the, the team starts being bigger or other ways of communication so yeah. yeah just being aware of it. As a tip in majority of the cases we try to create sub squads so if we have an outcome that requires more people we always try to break it down into the smaller pieces that again can be attacked by this trio or, or quartet of people so even if we have 10 people needed to drive the outcome the outcome usually can be sliced somehow towards, yes in like, smaller projects exactly so each a small group would be doing so we can projects. parallelize the work and then the people can mm -hmm. still silo a bit, a bit of knowledge of course they need to talk to each other if it's a parts of the same outcome but this is manageable a lot of times And then we have the the point about hierarchy. So who's gonna be like the boss of the team? You know, <laughs> should yeah. we have any higher hierarchy at all? Yeah. So if you were listening to our podcast before, you probably know already that we are not the best at hierarchy. And <laughs> uh, so I would say high collaboration, mm -hmm. as in any agile or lean team. So it should be flat working bottom up. So if we have like a mutual understanding, the small group of people of what we are building we can build it. If this small group of people requires a boss or a manager to manage so they can communicate with each other, the problem is somewhere else. The problem yeah. is not the framework you're using, etc. It's like those people need to talk to each other. Come on, it's like three, four people. Yeah. I know job is not always full of friends, but you need to make it work. If that does not work on a, on a level of those people cannot agree on what to build, what order etc i would say there's something wrong with the mission or how the teams are built yeah so if every team member owns the the, the outcome they are all owners of the outcome they would really push for it so really you wouldn't need yeah. like a strict hierarchy yeah, yeah yeah and then you know um from manager perspective <laughs> uh, not people but product um it's even better to leave this to the team at the end so what's gonna be the solution or how it's gonna look like or which order they're gonna attack it it's much better to give it directly to the team so people in the context a small group can can really drive the outcome and have this ownership so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and usually people are gonna be surprised with the outcome of the work instead of you know showing like hey guys you need to do those steps because i believe this is how we're gonna win uh, it's it's not that important yeah So it works better with, at least for us. With yeah, at project, least for us. At yeah, least yeah, for yeah. us. So each yeah. team is different. Uh, but what do we need inside this team, right? Because we yeah. said for each project is different, for each outcome is different. What are kind of the areas we normally need to cover? Yeah, and our like mind Maybe. models or abilities that you yes. need to have in a product team. So of course, depending on a team, company, product, budget, whatever, you will be able to like have either specialized people in those mm -hmm. with those abilities or someone need, will need to do few. Uh, but we believe it's like important to cross at least majority of them to just maximize the, the chances of a success. Exactly. One of them is understanding the user, one yeah. of the most important <laughs> ones, right? So yeah, someone who, who, who is able to understand the pains, to analyze the needs, to analyze how our product is used. Yeah, what are the possible opportunities sometimes in the market? So, you know, if you want to disturb something or build something new or even build something that's already existing in the market, you need to understand it somehow, <laughs> no? And of course you can do it engineering way. So like understanding the technology and how it works technically. So yes, you always can work back from technology. Uh, but we should not be driven by the technology only. So yes. you need this human and user, user touch there. So yeah. someone in the team needs to be able to generate this data for us. No? Uh, exactly. Um, if you have highly specialized roles, this can be a uh, product researcher, UX researcher. Yeah. Sometimes it can be the, the, the UX designer as yeah. well in yeah. some types of research. Uh, in many cases, it's going to be product manager, product Sorry, product owner role. So those people are also sometimes assigned to do it. I believe you can have it in data analysis uh, to profile also. So depending on a, on, a, on, a, on a specialization in your company, those are the roles that can happen there. So it would be either researchers, designers, product managers, or data analysts. Um, I would say in a case of a, like a 
super small smart startup, it's usually the the business guy. Sometimes he's gonna <laughs> be called the CEO, or he's by chance had an idea of a feature, etc. But this is the the person that needs to go to the past potential customers, find uh, if there is a problem that exists, if the solution is viable, and, and all of the stuff that we're talking about in case of the lean startup. So yes. Because it's the person who discovered the need in the market. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's a need discovery. Every product team should have some need in mind, so mm-hmm. outcome to, to achieve, and they need to understand it uh, while working. So understanding the user is super important. So you should be thinking about mapping this role in your team for sure. Exactly. Then as well, uh, okay, so you have an opportunity from a user, but as well you need to understand the market and the competitors. Yes. Is this already in the market? How, how are others doing it? Do I need to be the same? Is there any opportunity to be different? Uh, yeah. Product managers, product owners can be doing that? I would say this is their default uh, mm-hmm. a lot of time to understand the market. And, you know, so one is understand the market in like... How big is the addressable market? So how mm-hmm. many ex customers are in a country want to sell in and how many of them have this point pain? But then the other is like also when you have your value proposition, is it that you can penetrate 10% of your market or is it a value proposition that will wait, work for 90% of your market? So it is something that you should be thinking about again in some context. So if you're improving a feature, your highly optimization team, probably market in terms of my value proposition to open market is not that important, but then you have your own customers that probably you're going to work on adoption. So there is something that you need to keep in mind always. And this is usually when you have a product manager, product owner, this is their role. Um, In early stages, it's probably CEO. Um, Yes. And maybe if you're doing it on a more uh, tactical way, like what are exactly the interaction other products offer, the value yeah. proposition, you can have product designer or UX researcher doing benchmarking, exactly. like analyzing other features from other products. Yeah, to maybe cross-checking them with the users. So th- uh, this is why we say those roles can be combined in one person. So let's imagine this is your researcher. So the person can understand the user while trying to map the potential opportunities in the market and understand competitors as a benchmark. No. Exactly. But yes, for sure, the, the, the understanding the market as the potential is very important because you can understand the user, have the opportunity, but then it's like no yeah. value for the business. Yeah, yeah, so if you have five people, maybe you will not make enough money, unfortunately. <laughs> Which brings us to the business strategy. So this is the other thing that I believe teams should be aware of or have like a, at least one leg in it, meaning mm-hmm. like some understanding on how they can contribute to the business strategy of an organization or a company. Um, So, you know, you need to have some business outcome and you need to (laughs) work some way, as we were talking in previous episodes, you need to find a way to make these assumptions less risky. So your business plan is going to be full of assumptions. So you need to find a way to validate them and de-risk them. So for that, you need to understand this business strategy and work towards that one. And this is again, similar to the market. So I would say default gonna be product manager, CE level or CEO in the early days. Later on, you may have roles like product strategists. So they're heavily specialized roles of like individual contributors that can work on this business strategy viability. But I would say don't hire them early on. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah this, is, this, this is something important. And I, I believe like even if you don't have a dedicated role in your team, it's important for the team to understand how they contribute to the business yes, strategy. Yes, exactly. To understand what are we doing here in this company, yeah. right? Our work, what does it contribute to? Where are we heading? So this understanding of the, of the whole team, it's super, it's super important. Yeah. yeah. And I believe this also empowers the team at the end. So, you know, once True. you know how you contribute, it's easier for you to make all of the trade-offs and choose the right path to succeed there, no? So this is contributing as well to the, uh, not a hard hierarchy. Exactly, thingy. yeah, yeah. So if you have yeah. this alignment, the team or the people should just be better, no? At, at understanding this. Exactly. So we understand the business, we understand the market, we understand the, the user needs, but we need to build something, right? Yeah, so, <laughs> and before even building, we should understand like, it, can we build it? Yeah, is it feasible, right? Yeah. So, so, so feasibility is a big part here. Um, we always should be looking at them, especially if you think about it as a autonomous empowered team. So if we take like a top bottom approach, 
yes, this feasibility a lot of time it's like there is some jury that's like making call. Uh, sometimes there's gonna be engineering, sometimes not, but it's like we need to build this project X in the next three months. Let's build this project X. And then the team gonna find a way to build the project X. They're gonna find problems, bumps, and, and things like this. But if you work bottom up and mm -hmm. you have this alignment between the people understanding what's their business goal, etc., you can check the feasibility early on, no? And the people gonna work towards more feasible solution. And it can be in a zero day because you're building the strategy and all the solutions together. And it's not that you know the end goal a lot of time, you're building from the bottom. So then you can build the proper shell, no? Of like Exactly. So so for these basically the owners of this part are mainly the developers. So yeah, they know their technology. Yeah, usually that's gonna be the technical part of any organization. So there's gonna be developers, maybe QAs. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you're gonna have maybe a bit more educated product owners that's gonna be a bit more technical people um, and, and you try to understand if whatever you want to build is feasible in building and then this comes also to slicing right so when mm -hmm. you're deciding the iterations or MVPs and things like this this comes a lot of times from feasibility so hey we would like to build tele teleportation yeah I guess fine that's an amazing machine can we build something easier as a prototype no yes so this is a discussion you need to have at any moment in your product team or startup so yes and understanding the legacy we might have in our system yeah. the technology we can uh, work yeah. well. or depth that we are taking so you, you need to think about like iterations or shortcuts or mm -hmm. pivots they you know it's like you go to the bank and take a loan you have some debt you need to pay it at some moment and then having this feasibility and understanding of this technology part um, gives you an option to understand how much interest you're gonna need to pay in future yes. the trick is this is not the loan you need to pay every month usually it's usually coming like in the in the moment you have the, le the least money in your pocket, they're gonna come and say like, you need to pay triple <laughs> now. So it's it's good to know initially, also if you're making trade-offs, how much technical debt that's gonna involve, so. Yes, so once you, you understand the feasibility, another thing you need to have in the team is someone who can actually build yeah. the feature or build the solution, actually yeah. can make it real. And here you have like more technical roles right like yeah. the ux designer the product designer the developers all types of developers front end back end yeah. everything and they would be the like the owners of actually defining this solution yeah. into detail yeah so it's definition execution and delivery basically and then the roles around it as Hunkal said so those are the usual you're gonna have product designers back end developers front end developers mobile developers what like developer in general the tactical team that can build the solution um, and you need them right so if we understand the product strategy and we have amazing business case and we love our users it makes nothing because we cannot build anything for them in the earlier stages of course you're not gonna have those roles so early founders gonna go for no code solution to build an MVP etc that's fine that's that's still okay but uh, I guess in every person's mind, it's like, okay, I'm building this, I have no clue what I'm doing, and then if this works, I need to hire those people that know how yes, to do this solution. Yes, no? exactly. So they are crucial there. Um, so yes. if you're lucky in starting a startup and you have someone technical, yes, in IT, having technical people is, is like a plus. So. Yes, and also if the team is bigger or the project is more complex, you may also have in this part of delivery more other roles like the project manager, the delivery manager who yeah. will like help everybody to actually, uh, you know, navigate this uh, yeah. building process. Exactly, like Scrum Masters also may, may happen if you're using Scrum and Agile Guides and things like this. So all of the people that can help, like DevOps may appear True. like an either part of a team or outside the team to help you out with every, anything related to this. Um, in some organization, you're gonna have like product ops, design ops also somewhere, just yes. trying to build yes. all of the frameworks and processes. So everybody can go as smooth as, as possible to the market. So it's like people working on going to the market with the solutions. So execution, defining, delivery. 
Exactly. And then another super important thing we need to have in the team is understanding the outcome. Yeah. So whatever we build for the user, whatever we put in front of the user, what's the result? Did we achieve what we were looking for? Yeah. And I would say main one here would be product manager. Yeah. Right? So, so usually it's product managers, owners and people like this. Um, if you can, there's going to be probably some data analysis mm -hmm. that can help out with like both coaching the team on like what to track and how to track and what can, can be the, 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 you know, the outcome measure. Um, and I would say that in a perfect scenario, it should be the whole team. So if we yes, check yes. all of the checkboxes here, everybody understands users, feasibility, market and everything like this, then the team as a whole should be able to evaluate them su their success. As we were saying initially, without this hierarchy, it's better for them to understand if they're like successful, so they can be still driven by the mission, etc., or they're failing, and then if they need to change the mission or anything they want to do. So yeah, this will help uh, help them be autonomous, and that this will help them as well to think about better solution, improving the solution exactly. if this one is not working and why it's not working. Yeah. So yeah. yes, even though product manager is leading it because he's the expert, having yeah. everybody is is, the is super important. And what's imp important here also, because this happens sometimes when talking about it with the people is, okay, but I am a design a developer and fine, fine in the team, we are talking about the outcome and everything fine, but I build it on a matches and this shit gonna explode tomorrow <laughs> and we'll never fix the type of depth and my product owner is a bad person pushing me further for another MVP. Um, then again, think about it the other way around. So if you are afraid that the solution does not work or can mm -hmm. explode and mm -hmm. there are cases that are not covered or it's gonna be generating high maintenance, think about what does it mean? So high maintenance for me means like you're not gonna have time for the MVPs of that guy if the person is super excited about new stuff. You won't be able to build it because you will be maintaining the previous one, right? So there is an argument. If you're afraid that it's gonna explode or there are cases that are not covered, it's amazing. That's why you have all of the roles or at least abilities inside the team. So you can discuss it and say like, hey, I believe that's gonna be bad for the users. And you can balance this discussion then, having a discussion with a researcher and product designer and product manager in some cases to, to discuss of like, hey, I am afraid as a developer, we should do the refactor here. And if it makes sense, it makes sense. Exactly. If not, and you fail in those three people, there may be two reasons. One, you may be bad at pitching. I would not assume this in majority of the cases. And then the second, it may just not be that important. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But but I, I would I would really um, encourage everybody to do this right. So if you have this feeling of like, oh, but it's always about users, product, or whatever. No, no, no. It's about the outcome. So exactly. What does it mean that you want this thing? And if you spend some time, it's it's just better discussion with people then. It's about all the team uh, going through the outcome, and you as a developer or as a designer, which are your tools that you can push this this yeah. outcome forward the best. Exactly. So from your point of view, of course, you can say, "Hey, I think we will get there faster if we do this or if we change that." Totally. Exactly. Yeah. Totally or agree. from the design, it's like I don't know if we have shitty UI somewhere, no? Because it happens. Yes. You go for MVP, so you're gonna cut corners. Everybody knows that users in early days, some of them just not gonna care about design, so you can stick something that's not the prettiest, no? But then in time, it's like, okay, so if you believe you have usability problems somewhere, you have usability problems. So yes. this can be measured, no? It can be defined problem. And then you can cross-check this problem if it actually can deliver any outcome and value and if it's relevant. Or you try to reinvent the wheel, no? Because it's sure. like, my favorite is user management. So any software on the planet needs user management at some moment. So there's gonna be a screen with table and you will be inviting people. A lot of softwares have nice features around it. So the trick is you can spend infinite time on settings page of users. I believe you could create a team of people that would work there for the rest of their lives and would not end the backlog ever. And it's just like settings page for users. Yes. <laughs> this is irrelevant to any software on the planet. But the, the, the problem or solution space is there is so wide, you can get lost there. So yes. it is really important not to get to those kinds of traps, no? And understand, okay, but 
Is it relevant, really? Yes, but how can you solve this is if you understand very well the outcome of the team, then you can always test with the users mm -hmm. if they are able to do, I mean, to reach this outcome, to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So you can, at least for me, when you test your product with the users, you can really see that things that you thought that were horrible and were broken, users can totally use them, and maybe others that look super pretty, but then they don't understand it because the labeling is not correct, exactly, right? Yeah. So the best thing is just to test it yeah. in the context of your outcome, of course. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And to all of the user management teams <laughs> out there, like I really like and appreciate your work. It's just a bad example, no? I believe like if you, in your company this is important to make this part really working, it can work. It's just an example of like, invite a scope and you can spend their 30 years experimenting, optimizing it probably, so. Exactly. Um, so we went through a lot of highly specialized roles yeah. and all the time you were mentioning, yes, but what if you don't have this? What if you yeah. don't have that? So, so what happens on early stages where you don't have a lot of resources? What's like the bare minimum um, kind of thing? You were saying that most of the time the CEO can yeah, do that, Yeah, right? yeah, so, so in most of the cases, you know, uh, setup of a founding team is like a single guy or like three people. Um, this <laughs> idea that would be set is like you would have, okay, so maybe not go to ideal from the industry, but we can peel, pull from um, continuous discovery habits from, mm -hmm. from, um, uh, from Lady Torres. I forgot, Teresa, Teresa Torres. Torres, yes, <laughs> I am super bad with names, super sorry, it's not that I, I don't care. So um, there is this idea about the product trio in the book mentioned. Um, it is important, it does not to be really trio, or I believe it not, does not need to be trio, sometimes it's going to be quartet, sometimes it's going to be five people if you have enough roles and, and things like this. But the, the, the general idea is you should care at least about the three things inside whatever problem space you're working in. So it's desirability. Desirability. Exactly. Right. Viability <laughs> and feasibility. So those are the three main fillers you need to cover. Exactly. So the product actually makes sense yeah, for, exactly. for the market, for the user. You need these three things. Yeah, those are the minimal set. And then what's proposed there is if you look at the classical split of the roles, this means you need a product manager, a product designer, an engineer. So mm -hmm. those three people in minimum can generate you those three pillars. So you can check if there are addressable market and people desire or there is an opportunity for your product. Um, you can check if it's viable so you can sell it and then it, you can run a business with it and then feasibility is about technology and building the solution at the end so can you architect the product solution uh, from whatever concept or a problem you found on the market so this is the minimum um, and I would say in a lot of startups that's gonna be similar setup sometimes you're gonna have like a sales guy with a technical guy so the yes. sales guy gonna cover about whatever and they're gonna use bootstrap to design um but at some stage you should again you don't need pretty designs yet so 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 i would say this is what you use and this is also what we are using right now in like a one side yes. project we are building we also have this three people set up right yes so we have the product manager who had the business idea let's say right so in your case you <laughs> <laughs> Here, that's my the product manager. <laughs> Hello, I'm the, the product manager. <laughs> Who recently came up with a with a product idea, yeah. right? So product that it's uh, currently kind of working, yeah. but maybe we can make it better and maybe address a bigger market with it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And then um, we have also a product designer there, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and one engineer that's helping us. Uh, but actually, we have only three people. So I'm also taking care about the backend part. So I'm coding in the night. In the day, I'm a product manager. Um, in the night, I'm a backend developer. Wait for that podcast to come. <laughs> Um, helped with the front end and then we have a design. But since all of us were working on different product teams between, we can build this tree, right? So we can exactly. have these discussions uh, that we have right now. So it's more about, hey, will this part will work? No? So we float in our discussions around those three pillars still. Um, yes. Yeah. And so each one of us has like a core skill. So you have the business, you have the technology, you have the design, but they, they totally overlap. And, and that's the best, right? Yeah. Where So in the middle of the three is where you can get like the best 
decisions and the best product exactly. ideas. And like the examples can be from the silly ones that Steven that's helping us on the front end totally can code in backend. So yes, it's, he's not going to be the best backend developer on the planet right now. Who cares? He can contribute and push the product further. Um, and since we are using frameworks, UI kits, all three of us are building parts of the UI. No, it's like exactly not going to be the best one. But since we are aligned on what we want to achieve, we know how to build the prototypes and how to build stuff so we can later define it further and specialized role like you can come and say like, okay, so designer brain now, okay, let's make it a prettier and then make it smooth, but we can subsidize each other in this, in yes, this setup. Right it now. really overlaps at the, at the very beginning. The front end developers think about the code and at the same time it's coming up with solutions for flows. So everything it's, 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 Working together. Yeah. yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Lunch soon. Let's see Let's if in see. a few months yeah. we <laughs> make it. We're gonna, we're gonna keep you updated. Uh, but, but this is how we try to use it in a smaller scale. So when we don't have those specialized roles, we try to have at least those core three fillers covered. And then from there, we can understand the user, understand the market, and talk about how to go to the market later with the strategy, how to do the execution, delivery. Um, and yeah, build it up. Exactly. You just do it on a different level, but it doesn't mean that if you don't have like a marketing strategy, yeah. you cannot think about that, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's not that to discourage you to start your own startup on your own. It's totally doable. People made it. It's just harder. So um, if you cannot have more people, then harder job for you, but try to think about those three fillers. So mm -hmm. are there people that desire this or need this problem to be solved? Um, is it viable? So can you sell it? Do you know how to sell it to whom you're going to sell it? And then feasibility. So can you really build this solution? So is it that you want to build the teleportation machine? No. <laughs> Uh, actually, I will at some moment I will need to stop using this example in the podcast. <laughs> Why you have because a solution a, for teleportation? The, unfortunately, there are first prototypes built. Like actually, okay, it's okay. a super small scale, so you know you move like a, I'm gonna be bad, like a molecule or an <gasps> atom, and it's technically there. So there is this okay bonding. In I'm getting into physics now, but. Technically, we can teleport like a molecule. Um, so I, maybe soon I will need to stop with my teleportation because there's going to be someone saying like, hey, bro, I have like a big funding and building it. No? It so, can be built. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> getting, getting, getting to feasibility test now. Okay, I may fail, but yeah. yeah. Okay, let's find another one. <laughs> yeah, I, I will need to find. Cool. So um, this is all we wanted to talk and tell you today about like what we do in the product teams and how we understand the team and what are the core values or abilities the product team needs to think about and cover. Yeah. Um, I hope you're gonna be able to like, or you're already using some of those techniques yeah. and thinking about it. They're pretty common. Probably it will help you understand it better. Yeah. Like exactly why do we have these setups and why is it actually set up like that? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we encourage you to any discussion. So if you have any further questions, leave the comment. Um, please um, write an email at twofacet.gmail.com. Leave a comment in YouTube or write to us on Twitter at twofacetpodcast. Uh, and I guess we'll see each other in the next episode, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. In a few weeks. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much and see you around. See Bye. you. Bye.